It's the men's room. Good evening and thanks for joining in. My name is Onimisi Adaba. I trust you have a good week and um, still having a good one. Hoping or looking forward to the weekend. Yeah? All right. So, once again, welcome on board the men's room. Today, um, not too much of a lively one. Kind of a sad one today, uh, what we're going to be doing. Um, looking at um, suicidal rates, suicide, suicide, you know, and... Of course, yes. Taking our cue from the recent um, happening of uh, the doctor, Orwell Orji, who jumped into the lagoon and ended his life for reasons we don't know, we're not sure of. And uh, it really got me thinking and took me to uh, took me back to work. You know, did a quick research here and there and realized how everybody is all tensed everybody is all disturbed everybody is um, a whole lot of us going through some form of pressure or the other and having different ways or different means you know to let it all out sadly one way to let it out you know for some people is the word the s word yeah suicide and we've had that we've had that going on in nigeria for a while now and uh worldwide of course uh, men, women, but then again, then again, one major reason we're having in the men's room is that, you know, the rate amongst, uh, between the men and women, in fact, that, you know, for the men, it's, it's, it's higher than uh, the women. And we're going to be looking at why, we're going to be looking at how, and probably going to the mind of, you know, one who would want to commit suicide, and um, what the person thinks, and how he or she thinks, and... Of course, we'll look at the effects as well, and I, I'm going to be reeling out a whole lot, of, a whole lot of stats. I, I, I dog on, you know, just so that we'll be able to put this in perspective properly, and we will swing into it properly. I, for sure, I'm not doing this all by myself. I had to go get me the expert. I had me, um, I had to get me a psychologist to come do justice to this as much as we can, you know, given our time and all of that. <laughs> And um, I'm just going to go through one or two things and then let you in on my special guest who will be doing justice to this topic. Of course, like I, I did say earlier on, it's stemming from um, the development on Sunday of uh, the doctor that jumped into the lagoon, took his life for whatever reason, whatever reason. Now, suicide is often carried out as a result of despair, you know, the cause of which is frequently attributed to a mental disorder such as depression, bipolar disorder, schizophrenia, borderline personality disorder, alcoholism, or drug abuse, as well as you know, stress factors uh, such as financial difficulties, troubles with interpersonal relationships, and, and bullying. You know, so in an attempt to desperately escape suffering or a troubling situations, some people commit suicide just to end it, as in, look, I can't take this anymore. Yeah? Now, the WHO um, had this report of about 800,000 people dying of suicide annually and that it is a second cause of death amongst young people. As a matter of fact, they put the age, you know, between 15 and 29 years. This was in 2012. The statistics, according to um, WHO, statistics also showed that um, out of Nigeria's population, 6.5% committed suicide out of which, listen to this, 10.3% are male. That's the men folk. And 2.9% the female. Now I'm gonna reel, reel out some, um, uh, some more information right now. Recently, a 50-year-old former secretary, <coughs> excuse me, of the um, Bayabong Village Council in the two local government area of Akwai Bomb State committed suicide. The father of two. You know, simply identified as um, a canem headed. He dangled, you know, dangled from a rope tied to the roof of his room. And uh, reports say the deceased left a suicide note in which he blamed his action on the harsh economic conditions. Yeah? Now, some time ago, another story now, a 21 year old man identified as Chin also committed suicide after drinking a substance suspected to be rat poison in Kubwa you know, in um, the Federal Capital Territory in Abuja. The deceased was said to have um, dropped a note for his mother that he wanted to go to uh, go and rest. Another 23-year-old man, Wuchuku Ekwe, also committed suicide in Festac Town, Lagos, over the color of his skin, being an albino. His dangling body was 
uh, discovered in the apartment he lived with his parents and siblings in Festa Town was also gathered, but he refused to eat before the incidents in, in protest of uh, what he described as rejection and stigmatization by people because of his skin condition. Also, another father of four reportedly committed suicide by hanging in um, Okearo area, that's in Akure in Ondo State Capital. Uh, the deceased identified as Dyer reportedly took his own life when he found it difficult to fend for his own family. It was learned that the deceased driver had uh, of recent been having problems with the, the owners of this commercial vehicle. That's the, the, the vehicle he drove and all of that. It goes on and on. I could go as a 27 year old guy in Oshun State um, identified as Adekwala Bosari who hung himself over the indebtedness to a microfinance bank in spite of the amount payable that yeah, was reduced to about, guess what it was reduced to? 18,000 Naira. While a man in his 50s hung himself in Dutse Makanta in Buari Area Council again in the FCT due to his inability to meet up with family responsibilities. It goes on and on and on. I got this piece from the Nigerian pilot, you know, uh, the newspaper uh, article that was written um, sometime last year and all of that. Yeah, it's increasing, guys. It, it, it's not going down. It's not, uh, we're not counting out. We're counting out, actually, counting out people who keep committing suicide for one reason or the other. And like I did say earlier on, I reeled out a whole lot of reasons. But from these things that I've read, it's basically hardships, economic situation. 18,000 Naira. Believe that. You know. So a whole lot of these things going on right now. And uh, recently, the doctor jumped into the lagoon, killed himself and all of that. Another lady jumped in, I think the next day or two days after. Fortunately, the fisherman there pulled her out. You know, and uh, thank goodness for that. Where, in an, in an era where more middle-aged men are beginning to turn to suicide. I'll tell you a true story. Some guy calls, you know, I've been working with this guy and he calls every now and then seeking assistance and all of that and, you know, been working together and he calls and says he's been having suicidal thoughts. I'm like, hold on now, just take it nice and easy with yourself. And he's been trying to get a job and one thing, one thing, one thing, it didn't come through and I'm like, look, just hanging there. Calls two days, and two days, later and says he finally got the job that he was hoping for and I'm like what if you are taking your life you know life is hard we've got to do it hard as hard as it is and most times we I'm talking too much right I'm just trying to pour out my heart I've got my guest in the house who will do justice to what we're talking about and we're just gonna have a conversation around this topic suicide going to the mind and you know just just talk about the psychology and more so how to control it if that is your thinking tonight, you just might want to listen to us until the end of the show. Now, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, you drove all the way from the mainland. I, um, I highly appreciate this. Thank you for coming. How are you? I'm fine. All thank right. You. So, um, first time in the men's room. Welcome on board the men's room. So let's let's go into this. Um, suicide all over the place. The recent one being the doctor. Now, first of all, this is what I'm thinking. This guy is a doctor. He um, obviously had a car, a lovely car, ordered for his driver to come take him around that day. Um, and um, from, from, from what we know, from the look of things, he was living a good life, fairly good life. What would make such a young man, prospective young man, or accomplished young man, or uh, in the process of being accomplished, so to speak, what would make him jump into the lagoon, take his life, end his life? Okay, there are so many things that can make a man take his life, mm -hmm. especially those who do not have skills to solve their problems. Mm -hmm. For a young man like that to jump into the lagoon, there are serious underpinning depression that may be there without the families, the family members, the friends, mm -hmm or close relations to have noticed that. And um, when things like this are happening, our people see it as um, it is not their portion. They live in denial. They do not come quickly to the help the person needs. 
And uh, before you know it, the obvious will happen. Mm. For a young man like that who went through medical school, yeah. you know, medical school on its own has a high tone of stress. The demands there. High tone it's of crazy. stress. Yeah. And again, uh, there are certain things that can uh, predispose one to have depression. Such as? Uh, I mean, the, the general one we know is, look, financial, mm -hmm. I don't get money, mm -hmm. or there's no money, money is not coming. No, no, you no. Know, there, apart are, from there, that. there are genetic factors. Genetic. Because many times, uh, certain depressive illness runs in families. Mm -hmm. So where such is playing, it means that they have a um, uh, genetical uh, traits or predisposition mm. to have this illness, either that they are, uh, uh, like depression can be uh, defined in a way of people who have depletion in their neurochemical transmitters. And when such a situation is playing, it's obviously a clinical condition mm. and also a, a genetical issue. How do you how do you get to know this? How do you get to know when it's playing out? I like what you said that most times we live in denial and we're like, it's not my portion, it's not my portion. You see it happening and you're like, it's not my portion. But how do you get to see this and jump into action to take quick actions to um, control, contain, and stop this? Um, many people who commit suicide showcase their in intents or intentions mm. before it is completed. They keep throwing hints here uh, and there, they, right? Some may tell you outrightly that one day I will end it mm -hmm. and give you people a chance so that you leave. Mm. Uh, he, he, he may be finding himself as a misfit in the family he felt he belongs to, that Actually, he's supposed to be wholly appreciated and uh, helped. Yeah, what you're saying now reminds me of the young guy who took his life because of his, 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 his skin pigmentation, his skin color, an albino. You know, he, he could fit into this category. Uh, and you don't, know, you don't know how the family members have been playing out mm -hmm. with him. Uh, they, may be giving, they may have given him a name because of that color of the skin yeah. that any time there is a scrubble, they will they throw call that, that name. name. Yeah. Uh -huh. And again, uh, if his friends are also not showing that understanding and everybody is keeping away from him mm. because of that, uh, obviously he can go ahead to Stigma. Uh, uh, feel yeah. uh, rejected and uh, abandoned. Mm. And again, by the time people commit suicide, they have severe depression. At that point, they lack control. It is like somebody who is found inside a bottle, a big bottle mm -hmm. or a big tank mm -hmm. that has no ladder, no where to step on, just no just where to hold on to, to come out. Trapped in there. The person is trapped. And the only way the person can come out is if there is a help, like somebody throwing in a, a rope, rope or, or sending in a ladder mm. or extending a hand. Mm. So if such is not done, that person obviously will be having a lot of psychological pain or stress, which it depends on the, the thought pattern at that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's what we call abnormal electrical discharges, which goes with certain level of aggression, okay. or uh, what we call a complex partial seizure that can happen to people, it affects a particular lo lo location of the brain. It doesn't affect the whole brain. Mm -hmm. And at, that, at the point it is playing, one can behave abnormally. Mm -hmm. So such a, a condition make people act in a manner that sometimes they may not even realize they actually acted out yeah. in that form. Yeah. Uh, it is only psychologists and sometimes psychiatrists that can evaluate uh, uh, these uh, clients and find out the conditions and be able to help them. Yeah. I, I, then again, I mean, I appreciate this, but in these parts, again, 
going back to the statement you made, you know, at the start of the chat, you talked about us rejecting it's not our portion and all of that, but we see this and we are afraid to make use of you guys, the experts, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, to say, hey, look, take a look at this person. I think, I think, I think we, first of all, do we, how many of you, psychiatrists and psychologists, do we have around to be able to take care of these things? And then the fact that we just don't do what we need to do. Uh, let me tell you, there is a poor knowledge of what psychologists and psychiatrists can do. Mm. And uh, even when we devote our time uh, uh, to do public education, public yeah. enlightenment, mm -hmm. the, the, the people who are receiving this information, they don't make use of it. Yeah. Many times, it is given free mm. to make them make the society better. Mm. But many things that happen to individuals starts from the home. The way they are handled, the kind of disciplinary setting, how these children are helped while they are growing up. Mm. What are the skills that we are building when they were growing up? Like you see a lot of uh, students or uh, children having low self-esteem. Mm. They do not have a, a good self-appraisal of themselves. They feel down. They, it goes with low uh, self-confidence. And uh, more uh, importantly, these children lack good social skills and even communication skills. And it affects the that psyche. many times they have a big barrier talking to their parents, asking certain questions because the parents are not readily there mm. for them. Mm. They, they, they turn to their friends. Of what we call peers, yeah. and uh, oftentimes they don't get the best or good information they need to yeah, have that will help them. Or uh -huh. Many of them are introverted. They have uh, this uh, psychological traits, uh, negative uh, traits. Being introvert, they keep to, the, to themselves. They are withdrawn. They don't have friends. Their friends or friendship acts as a backup mm. at the time of distress. You run to your friend because you'll be able to pour things. Yes, out. and you and see the, for, again for us men. I mean, we all all muscled up and buffed up. We're all dressed and all of that. We really don't pour out our hearts, you know. Um, I don't know society, us, you know, our wiring and all of that. Um, and actually, this is one of the um, focal points for the men's room. You know, okay in the fact that it's 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 okay to pour it out it's okay to talk it through and all of that but this also could be one element or one factor that could cause the one to go overboard just bottling things up on the inside yes many who would even want to talk out will be afraid of betrayal mm. that if they say this thing out as they are feeling it mm. that this information can be given out to sources mm -hmm. that he wouldn't be comfortable with. I'll tell you this, one of the stories, I'm sorry I'm cutting it, but again it ties in, one of the stories we, we once handled here in the men's room was uh, male abuse. And um, again on researching uh, on this topic, I realized that, or I, I discovered that it is, it is easier for um, women to yell for help when they're being abused than men. Because for us men, <laughs> how dare you say a woman is abusing you you know and so again these are things that one can just hide and keep inside and bottle up inside and live in pain let me tell you many men are in great distress yeah. especially now that there is a economic uh, recession upheaval many are not meeting up with their financial responsibilities mm. anymore mm. it is worse where the wife is not working Mm -hmm. and there is no succor financially get coming from anywhere. So this man will be afraid of so many things that how can he live and see his responsibilities going down without attending to it. Yeah. He will feel so much yeah. ashamed and uh, unworthy mm -hmm. or worthless. Mm -hmm. uh, at a point when the person is having bouts of depression mm -hmm. as a result of this, mm -hmm. It can lead to anything. Now, here is a here is a take from one of the um, my research, you know, my research findings and all of that. And this is this is not just in Nigeria. It's not local here. It's worldwide, um, international as well. 
um, figures published by the Office of the National Statistics um, reveals that um, 6,223 people aged over 15 killed themselves in 2013, a 4% increase on the previous year. And the male suicide rate was more than three times higher than the female rate with 19 people dying, 19 male deaths per 100,000 people compared with 5.1 for the women. This is all linked to the economy now. And like I reeled out earlier on, a whole lot of them, economy, economy, economy. And you were talking, you know, in that direction before we went on break. Take it on, please. Yes. Um, um, it is not only on economy per se. It is uh, the exposure men have like uh, there are more men who handle guns mm. than women and they can take their lives if they want with that. Uh, there are more men who are involved in alcoholism which can predispose one to have depression and uh, where, where economy comes in also is uh, men who have low income yeah. or who work all day by earning low, can easily go to get into alcoholism or yeah. abuse of certain substances. Just trying to pour out all the um, craziness there yes. in the bottle of booze. And Just there's something about us men and money, you know, and mm. providing. You know, if, if that providing power is not there, there's something it takes away from us. And it, I think it, it, takes, it takes a strong man to still, you know, be down there and um, still keep his head up. Uh, let me tell you, uh, many men, have uh, issues mm. or what we call some certain mental challenges mm. which they rarely admit. Uh, they feel as far as they are still communicating well, no obvious abnormality yeah. of uh, often playing out and as far as the it, it, it looks as if things are everything well are ahead. settled yes. ahead. They they feel they are overly in control. Yeah. Ahead. Over time, the people we are evaluating or assessing and discovering their conditions of mental challenges, like a man who fell to who fails to sleep over two weeks mm. or more. Insomnia is what it's called, right? Insomnia yeah. is insomnia is a, a part of. Uh, somatization, uh, which can lead, which is an onset to depression. Mm. Uh, and you know, men who do not overly achieve sleep, their lifespan is cut off by twenty percent. They okay. die uh, young; that is younger than mm, the es wow. their estimated. Twenty uh, percent. Yes. I, think I should go get me some sleep right now. Right so, after the show. I'm telling you, <laughs> truly. I mean, because so, sometimes we brag and say, I've not slept for two days. Many I've people, been, are, many people working, are not you know, sleeping. I've been working. Some been have what this. we call early insomnia, middle insomnia, or late insomnia. Mm. And uh, overly, once you do not have full sleep, it affects your daily activities. Your performance, your psyche, uh -huh. your and, delivery. And, and there are other conditions that can also uh, co-play that will uh, predispose you to having depression. Many will not know that they are depressed. When they are not eating well, yeah. when they are not happy, when they, just, uh, when they lack sleep, and when they feel that somebody somewhere is doing them, <laughs> <laughs> is after their lives. When they have serious fear of the unknown, I don't know what tomorrow will be called. Two or three signs like this is enough to put you. Really? Yes. Put you on alert. Yeah, or yes, on the scale of uh, depression. Wow. So the um, and you know everybody can be depressed at one point or yeah. the other. Mm. What we call normal depression. But when this condition stays up to two weeks, three weeks or more, mm. it becomes clinical depression. And at that point, the an individual must be helped. To come out of it, and in many cases, either mild antidepressants mm -hmm. are given to stabilize that person yeah. before uh, we also augment it with psychotherapy. Yeah. Uh, that we, and in the psychotherapy, we look at the circumstances Around. leading to that problem. 
if it is coming from the family setting, we invite the significant others in the family mm -hmm. and sort out the problem mm -hmm. so that the person will be. And if it is, if there is what we call uh, express emotion, where the family through their the way they interact with one another, mm. if it is jeopardizing the happiness of the other, yeah. we also caution. And again, in, in uh, mental health management, when an individual has an issue, it is the whole family that is sick. It affects everybody. It affects everybody, unlike the physical illness. It's when one individual is sick, it's only personalized. Reference hospital in Yama. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for coming. She came Thank all the you. way for this, her commitment, dedication, and just to help you, just to help you listen right now. That's why she's here. And thank you for listening. And go do the right thing. Men's Room is over and out. Don't forget, at Men's Room OJ, just drop in your thoughts and also um, Twitter and Facebook. Let's be there and carry on the conversation. Good night. And God bless you real good.